All right, here we go. <laughs> Slow Walker in the building. What's going on with you today, sir? Not much. Just driving on down the road. All right, all right. So when I when I when I called you up, it says Missouri. That's that's where you that's where you from. Yeah, I live in I live in Missouri. All right, all right. So that's what's up. All right. So do me a favor, brother man. Introduce yourself and uh, you know tell us a little bit about the bad story where you came from. You know before you got into trucking and all that good stuff. Well, they call me Slow Walker. I've been out here. 27, coming about 28 years. Mm. Old school. Blue Reefer. I got a company I've been with now. I've been with them about four years. I've been an owner-operator. I've been a lease driver. I've been a trainer. Worked in truck driving schools. I mean, the only thing I haven't done is haul cattle, dead bodies, or doubles and triples. <laughs> Damn it, man! You have done it all, man. So I gotta give you, I gotta give you a bomb drop for that one, bro. Uh, let's <laughs> let's start a little bit about uh about you know twenty eight years in the game, man. How has it been for you so far? I mean, what what has all of the things in the beginning that you saw all the way up until now with the new technology and everything? When I first started, it was I mean we did. We were called new breeds when I first started because I, I went through truck driving school and it's when truck driving schools were still fairly new. I mean, the trucks have changed a lot. I, Christ, when I first started driving, the trainer truck I was in was in an old, uh, was a flat top freight liner. Right. Uh, you know, that was that was my training truck. When the condos come out, that, you know, we thought we were living high on the hog if you, if he's able to, you know, get assigned to a condo. <laughs> so a lot of a lot of the things that have changed is i mean the attitude of the younger drivers that's that's mm. that's a lot of it i mean when i first when i first started driving it was all about you know if you didn't know you weren't too sure you know find an old hand talk to an old driver see what you you know see what you can sit down and learn mm -hmm. nowadays you know that's you know that that's out the, out that just doesn't work yeah and I mean, the technology on the trucks, I agree with some of it. A lot of it I disagree with. Some of these stupid safety features, but, you know, yeah, that's not making you a truck driver. That's You're, you're a steering wheel holder. You got to you got that radar in the front, lane control devices on the on the side. You know, that's that's what mirrors are for. <laughs> that's what that windshield's for. Some of the stuff, you know, dash cams, I agree with the dash cams. I've got one in my truck. It doesn't face me. It faces out. I'm still one of these old guys. If I don't have a gear shift, then I'm I'm not driving a real truck. Well, you know what, you know what, slow man. I, I'm I'm going to tell you right now. I I appreciate all you older drivers, all you veterans, all you old school drivers. Because I still, it's me being a young jack. You know, only been you know only been in the game for six years. I still learn something new every day every time i talk to a different old school driver whether it's a female from where they came from back in the day to you know to the males that still you know still keep some of their old school ways you know now a lot of us a lot of us would tell you old school guys like yo y'all need to give it the program y'all need to give it the program but i mean some of the old school ways is still it's still true to this day. Do you agree? Oh yeah. I mean, when I when I when I first came out, you learn something new every day. You know that's that's something I've been doing every day for the last almost you know almost twenty eight years. A lot of this stuff, you know, everybody wants to rely on GPSs and their computers and Google Map and Google Earth. They don't know how to read a damn atlas. Mm. I mean. I've got a GPS in my truck. I use it all the time, especially when I get into cities that I don't know about. Mm -hmm. But I've got my damn Atlas sitting right next to me. And every time I get a load, you know, I'm looking at that routing on my Atlas because that's the way I was taught how to do it. You see somebody on broke down on the side of the road, you know, every once in a while you can hear somebody holler, hey, driver, you all right? And you don't hear a lot of that. Nowadays, because hell, half the time, most people don't have their radio on. 
Let's let's the let's. Way we, oh, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. You know the way we ran years ago. You, you you can't find that nowadays. A lot of drivers just you know they see it as a job, mm-hmm. and I'm sorry, driving a truck's not a job. I mean, it's my career, and this is my lifestyle. This, I mean, this, this is me. And there are a lot of whole older drivers like me. That's exactly how I feel, how we feel. You know, this is our lifestyle. Mm-hmm. It's not something we get up and do every day because we have to go to work. We get up and do it every day because, well, that's just the way it is. That's our, it's, that's our life. If you, and if you can't figure that one out, you don't need to be in a damn truck. It's not a job. This is something that we do. And a lot of people don't realize how many things are relied on or well, a lot of people don't realize how much everybody else relies on us. Mm. Well, slow. And listen, let me, let me ask you this. Let me, let me bring you back a little bit because about what you just said about uh, a lot of drivers don't uh, consider this as a brotherhood <laughs> like it used to, because you know, we don't have the CBs in our trucks. We don't pull over for a driver that's broke down. I, you know, I heard some companies now, you know, in the new millennial, don't even allow their drivers to to pull over and help another driver. Uh, yeah, there for insurance I, I, years purposes. ago. Yeah, years ago, old Aero Track lines. They, they, and I didn't. I never drove. I never drove for them. Thank God. But uh, no, what an Aero. It was Builders Transport. Mm-hmm. Builders Transport years ago. I was running with one of their drivers, and. We went to hit hit the shoulder because there was another, uh, it was a broke down truck or something, mm-hmm. and the driver yelled and said, "I can't pull over." Well, why not? It's our sitting duck policy. We mm. can't pull. We can't. We can't stop on the side of the road because it makes us a sitting duck. Mm-hmm. Nowadays, I can. You know, I kind of understand it just for the very simple fact. How many times do you see people actually move over for someone that's broke down on the side of the road? I mean, it's common sense. Move over, but a lot of people don't. So, in a way, I can I, I see the companies. I can see why they tell you not to not to pull over on the side of the road because it you, there that is a safety issue there. Right. So let's and, and insurance reasons. Let's let's talk about the CBs, man. You know, a lot of these new jacks, including myself, because you know when I first started. When I first started with U.S. Express, I, I did go maybe about a whole six or seven months uh, without uh, without a CB, and I, you know, I and I was like, "Yo, I gotta get me a CB. I gotta get me a CB." But then on the side, on the flip side of me, it was like, well, "Why do I need a CB? Why do I?" Need? But now that I got a CB, I see, I, I see why I need it. But I, you know, just like you said. We we don't keep it on all day like like you know you old schoolers used to do back in the day. Now back in the day, you know, CB talk was was the rage. But now nowadays, CB talk just is just kind of ugly. Yeah, to, it, you know, to yeah, the point a, that bunch, oh, go ahead. there's a bunch of garbage on it now, and I mean, but. On on that token, though, there's always been crap on the radio. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's just that's that's always that's always been a part of uh, been a part of driving is you hear all the nonsense and all the foul language and all the stupid crap and all the racist crap. I mean, I've been hearing that crap for 28 years on the radio. Mm-hmm. But what a lot of people haven't thought about or what they forgot about is before cell phones, before satellite radio. You know, before all the stuff that everybody takes advantage of today, that's how we kept in touch with each other. If we got four or five guys running in a line or, you know, yeah, we're going to BS with each other. If we're convoying down the road and there's 12 trucks, well, are we all going to do a conference call with our headsets on talking to everybody? No, you know, we're we're, going to jump up to to Sesame Street and start talking to them or we'll go to you know find another channel but the biggest reason we still use the cbs other than the communication that way i know what's going on in front of me Mm -hmm. i'm going to know about 
the snow. I'm going to know about the accident. I'm going to know about a slick spot. I'm going to know about some dumbass to jackknife because I've got my radio on it. Hopefully somebody's got a radio on in front of me or coming the opposite direction. It's going to get on there and yell, yell it to me about it. So I already know what's going on two miles before I get to it. Mm-hmm. And all these other yahoos are just booking their ass on down the road and don't know anything and have to slam on the brakes the very, the very last second because they're not paying attention. They don't have the radio. They don't think it's a necessity. I've got my cell phone and I've got my Google and I've got satellite and I don't need none of that stuff. That's old school bullshit. Yeah, well, it, the reason it's an old school bullshit, the reason why we're still around is, well, you know, maybe we learned. You might want to learn about it. It's like these guys that go around talking about a driver shortage. There we go. I've been hearing about there it. There we go. I've been, I've been hearing about it. <laughs> yeah. I've been hearing about it driver shortage for 28 years. Mm-hmm. When I went to truck driving school 28 years ago, my instructor told me I was at the cusp of a burgeoning, of a beginning industry because we were 80,000 drivers short mm-hmm. and it was only going to get bigger. And it's been, years later, and it's still it's eighty thousand. <laughs> the ATA and everybody else is still saying, "Well, there's a driver shortage. Mm. We're eighty thousand drivers short." Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Pardon slow, my language. Slow shit. Tell, 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 tell them. Tell the real. A, tell them. Tell them what's the real shortage is. There's a give a shit shortage. <laughs> The companies don't give a shit. The shippers don't give a shit. The receivers don't give a shit. And the brokers don't give a shit. Now, I've gotten extremely lucky with the company I'm with. My company actually does give a shit. And I'm sure there are other companies out there that do, too. That's why old guys like us haven't left them. But you got these other companies that, have, you know, they're bringing in 40 drivers a, 40 oh, drivers a week for orientation. Well, it's because it's a driver shortage. No, it's not. It's because you just lost 40 drivers because you got shit equipment. You got shit freight. You're not, you, you don't get them home on time. You're paying them crap money. You make them sit all day long. If there was a driver shortage, tell me why people, why other drivers are still sitting in truck stops waiting for freight. Because if there was a driver shortage, freight would be stacking up on docks. And we wouldn't be able to sit still. They'd have us booked out a week, two weeks in advance. And that, it's a crap. It's like I said, it's a give a shit shortage. What do you What do you say to Thank people? You. What do you say to people? Because you had you you had a few, you you had a few that came in your comment session talking that garbage, talking that talking that. Uh, there's not a shortage. There, there's not a shortage. It's just this and it's just that. What do you say to people like that, man, that, that comes to you that says, well, there is a shortage. There, there, you know, like I said, I've been saying that for the last six years that I've been driving. I feel that I feel that there's a retention shortage. There's, there's, oh, yeah. there's that's, that's, that's the biggest thing right there. Right there. Exactly. It's not that we're it's not that we're short drivers. It's that companies can't keep their drivers where they're at. A prime example. With the experience that I have, I can go almost anywhere I want and start off at a good rate. The company I'm with now, when I started driving for them four years ago, I started off at forty seven cents a mile. It isn't great money, but it's good money. Mm-hmm. Four years later, I'm at 58 cents a mile mm-hmm. in four years. I've had a nine cent increase in four years. Some of these bigger companies out there, well, you have to go to the East Coast. I don't want to go to the East Coast. You have to. That's where the freight's at. The problem being is you go to the East Coast and there's nine million other trucks out there trying to pull a thousand pieces of freight. That doesn't sound like a driver shortage to me. That's a freight shortage and it's a give a shit shortage because they don't care how long you sit up there and wait. Or if you got to, you try to get home. Uh, we'll get you there. We'll get you there. I needed to be home yesterday, and you're a thousand miles away. And then they send you a thousand miles to the other direction. You've got some companies that'll take care of you, and it's all about family. And then you've got other companies, and these are big, small, medium, me- mega carriers that all you know that do it as well. They just don't care. All they want to do, all they're worried about, is the bottom dollar. You know, they expect us to live in these trucks three, four, five, six weeks at a time. But they don't realize, you know, some of us have a family life. 
Some of us like to go home and spend time with mama, mm -hmm. pat the kids on the head. Mm -hmm. And they don't, they don't care, and they don't even think about that. So then you got these dispatchers that are, well, I've been in the trucking industry for 15 years. Really? How much time have you spent behind the wheel? Well, I ain't ever been behind the wheel of a truck, but I know how to do your job. Okay. Right. I love right. those guys are almost, I mean, when I hear that, all I can think of is, you know, they haven't the foggiest idea what they're talking about, but they're going to tell me how to do my job and think I don't know how to do their job. A lot of these companies don't realize that there are a lot of drivers. When we walk in to an office, we're paying attention. Why are we paying attention? Because that's what we do 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Mm -hmm. We have to pay attention to everything. I used to tell my students, look, when you drive a truck, when you're driving down the road, you have to know what's in front of you, beside you, behind you, around you, and next to you, all at the same time. Plus, you have to know what's about to happen. So when we walk into an office and we're talking to our dispatcher and you're sitting there talking to him, watching him play on his little computer, yeah, we're watching that. And we're learning and we're figuring crap out. And some of these guys, they just don't get it. But on the same token, you've got these other drivers out here that sit there and think they've been out here two or three years and they know everything. And those are the ones that are just as stupid as the dispatcher that's been doing it for 15 years that thinks he knows how to do my job when all he does is drive a computer. <laughs> Get on Google Maps and be like, yeah, you could be there in 15 minutes, bro. Uh, yeah, it, traffic. It, it, it's, only six, <laughs> it's only six inches on the map. Okay. Yeah, you know, right? <laughs> Slow. Listen, man. I, you know, you've been, you, you've been a trainer. So as, as the time that you've been a trainer, what what was some good students that you had and what and what was some of your problem students that you had you know i had this one student i remember the most and this was years ago when i used to i used to train for celadon <sighs> i had this one old boy from florida funny thing about it every time we'd stop and sit down and get coffee he'd always pour just half of a screamer in his coffee and he'd always look at you and go, the rest of it's the case of a nuclear winter. Mm. And the guy was older than me at the time. But he listened. He didn't take the age difference into consideration. He looked at the fact that he had just finished doing his stuff. And he was coming into a newer, uh, a newer aspect of the trucking industry that he knew nothing about. Then he's got this trainer that's 10 years younger than him that is telling him what to do. And instead of being all cocky and stupid about it, oh, I don't have to do that. You're younger than me. He actually sat down and listened to me. And he, he turned out to be a hell of a driver. I mean, he had a couple mistakes, and, you know, all students make mistakes. But he, he learned from his mistakes. I used to tell all of my students, all my trainees, the exact same thing. I'm going to be hard on you for several reasons. The biggest reason you will never get a perfect score from me is because you're not God. Mm -hmm. And God wouldn't get a perfect score from me. I'd take two points away from him for original sin. <laughs> the second thing I would tell him is understand this. One of these days, on one of these roads, sooner or later, somebody in my family is going to be driving next to you in that four-wheeler. And they're going to do something stupid. My job is to give you the basic knowledge as a trainer to know how to keep what they do turning into something bad for one stupid mistake where it's just a little inconvenience for you and them. Because what it boils down to, no matter what, one stupid mistake from anybody will kill people. Mm -hmm. You take that guy in Colorado that everybody's whining about on his 110-year sentence. That was his stupid mistake. He was a dumbass. He didn't do his job. I don't care that he only had six months experience. I don't care that everybody wants to say, oh, it was an accident. It was an accident. No, it was not an accident. He knew he had bad breaks. He knew he couldn't read the English words on the sign. 
He knew he was going right by an escape ramp. What did he cho- chose to do? He chose to slam into park traffic doing 85 miles an hour because he was scared of getting hurt and he wanted the cars to stop him. One stupid mistake, and that's all it takes. Hold on for My a second. My worst student. Hold on. Hey, tell him not to park there. <laughs> Jesus. I, I, right now. Uh, right now, we, we're in an area that's like real condensed, and here comes a car. I, I don't know. All the space over there in the back, yet you're going to park where the trucks literally needs to turn, pull out, and turn around. Do You're going to park <laughs> right there. Jesus Christ. Uh Listen, I you know what? I you know, everybody is entitled to their opinion, especially to the, you know, to the guy, you know, that, you know, the the 110, you know, my, yeah. you know, my opinion varies different, you know what I'm saying? I I I looked at it as as the young man was being, you know, he he got into a situation. We don't know what was going on in the cab. Yes, I understand that you know, the, on the outside looking in, uh, we seen him pass a couple of uh, a couple of ramps. We seen him pass that. Yeah, he, 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 we, he we, went right by the damn escape ramp. He changed lanes as he was passing the right, escape ramp. Right. We we seen that, but again, as you know, as 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 my opinion goes, we was not in the cab with him. We don't understand. We. we we had the slightest idea of what was going through this man's mind. You know, obviously, it, he he must have been in panic mode because, I mean, you know, when you get oh, in I the panic I mode, I your your mind just, <laughs> you know. I don't. I don't doubt he was. I'm in fact, I'm I'm sure he was panicking. Mm-hmm. But one of the reasons I'm so hard on it, and probably the reason some of a lot of other drivers are hard on it, we've lost. I've lost my brakes before. I'm coming down a hill in Pennsylvania, and I have no brakes. Mm. I'm doing 85 miles an hour on a wet road, and I've got 60 pounds of air pressure pushing on my brakes trying to stop my truck. The only reason my trailer brakes didn't catch on fire was because it was raining. There was, I mean, I had water going up on them, keeping them from catching on fire. I had smoke going everywhere, but I didn't panic. I just, you got to solve the problem as it's going with you. It's not something you can think about after it's done with. It's something you have to sit there and think about why it's going on. Oh, crap. My truck won't stop. What do I do? I've got to do something. With my luck, with, with my situation, and I had been driving less than a year. Mm-hmm. I did the one thing I was told never to do, and it slowed me down enough to where I could get my truck, truck off the road and stopped. When I first started driving, I was told never. Never, no matter what happens, turn on your Jake brakes on a wet road because it's going to whip your trailer around. So I'm going down this hill with no Jakes. Only thing I could think of, all right, got my seatbelt on nice and tight, grip that steering wheel. I start edging over to the shoulder because I'm going to put it into the ditch and I'm hoping those trees don't hurt. And I hit in their flip, lift, and hit my Jake brakes, and I start slowing down because I lost all the brakes on my truck. My trailer brakes was the only thing that was slowing me down. When I hit my Jake brakes, well, that slowed my truck down enough to where I could get back control of the truck. But a lot of these people don't think about those things. When, you, when you're driving down the road mm-hmm. and you've got a 40-ton missile, because it, admit it, that's all we are, or a 40-ton missile, mm-hmm. you have to think on your feet. You can't just sit there and go, oh, shit, what's going to happen now while you're barreling down the road? Can I can I interject right quick? See what sure. what you what you done and what I respect is that experience. You see what I'm saying? A lot of a, yeah. a, a lot of these new jet drivers don't have it because either they wasn't properly trained, you know, as as it is because when we get trained in these days when we get trained, we only get trained just to pass just to pass the test for our license. And then when we go and work or go to work for these 
mega carriers that would bring in non uh you know non experienced drivers they put them with non experienced drivers to train yeah, how, how the hell how the hell is a six month uh, how the hell is a you know you got six months you're still a rookie and then you're going to sit there and train another rookie that's got less experience than you exactly and the mission and the misconceptions a lot of new drivers have truck driving schools they're not supposed to teach you how to be a truck driver. That's mm. not their job. Facts. Okay. When I'm work, when I worked in truck driving schools, I told them flat out, plain and simple, it is not my job to teach you how to be a truck driver. My job is to give you the basic abilities to pass a CDL test. We're going to teach you how to do your pre-trip. We're going to teach you the backing maneuvers that you need to know. We're going to teach you how to drive up and down the road, upshift and downshift, how to make turns and not hit anything. We're going to teach you the bare minimum, just enough to pass the test. When you get with your other driver, when you get with other your company, that's when you learn to be a truck driver. Just because you're at a truck driving school doesn't mean you're going to be a truck driver. That just means you have a CDL. Mm. That is so. And that that, that is so point. That is so point coming now, from slow. And, and I had a lot of people arguing with me on that on TikTok. Well, there's and this. What they don't understand is there's a difference between a truck driving school and a college. Now, colleges offer a CDL course, mm -hmm. and they're anywhere from four weeks to six months long. Well, once you get past the four week section, you're not just going to a regular old truck driving school. You're actually you're at a college, and you're learning the basics of the business. Mm -hmm. But at four-week truck driving school, they're just teaching you enough to pass the test. Hell, there, there's truck driving, one-day one CDLs. You show up on a Monday, they show you what they need to know, and Monday afternoon or Tuesday morning, you're at the test site getting your CDL. Truck driving schools aren't supposed to teach you to be a truck driver. Because if that was the case, every school would be at least five years long because that's how long it takes to become a truck driver. And that's just a rookie truck driver. Once five years is over with and you haven't gotten into an accident or killed anybody, well, then instead of keeping a big old paper, you know, a wad of paper towels behind your ears to keep the water from dripping on your shoulder, you just have a dab them every once in a while. I've been out here 28 years. I'm still wet behind the ears. I still learn stuff new every day. Whether it be techno new technology on the truck, uh, believe it or not, a new road that I haven't drove on. The day I know everything about driving a truck, the day I wake up and go, that's it. I know it all. That's, that's the day, the I day you put your keys and hang, and hang them up. Exactly. Because that's the day I become dangerous. But a lot of people don't think that. It's just some of the laws out here that a lot of people don't know about. Mm -hmm. And since I'm on here and I'm hopefully going to get – this is going to blow up for you right here. Go okay? ahead. Go ahead. What I'm about to say, your podcast is about to get nailed with a whole lot of stuff. Go ahead. I, I am a Second Amendment advocate. Now, 